Chapter 12, Worlds Within Worlds. A gust of cold, damp wind suddenly reminded Krista that she needed to find shelter for the night. She'd been so fascinated with Zack, she'd forgotten they were still a long way from home, and now they would have to spend the rest of the night in this unfamiliar part of the forest. Looking for Batty, she saw him hanging upside down, almost hidden, among long strips of bark hanging from a nearby stringy bark tree. Leaving him alone, she fluttered off in search of a safe place to sleep. She didn't want to spend the night in a dark and stuffy burrow. She wanted to be high up in the trees where she always felt safe. But Zack's lack of wings posed a problem and ruled out her usual choices. She hunted for an empty bird's nest and checked out empty tree trunk hollows, but these were either too small or too dark. A glowing fungus staircase growing up the side of a massive carabine tree caught her eye. Running up it, she discovered that it ended when it fanned out into a soft platform almost at the top of the tree. With the tree trunk and branches as protection from the wind, she knew they would be safe. Excited, she hurried back to tell Zack, but when she flew into the clearing, she found the air was thick and heavy with a choking mist. <coughs> it smelled overpoweringly strong. <coughs> Zack was standing in front of a brush turkey mound, which was glowing brightly in the dark. Come warm yourself, he called. I had one of the wonders of modern technology in my pocket, a disposable lighter. He grinned, holding it up for her to see. <gasps> what is it? Krista asked, creeping slowly towards the flame. It's fire, he said, proud of his effort. That's fire? She reached out to touch the flame. No, he shouted, pulling her hand back. But she'd already touched the flame, and her hand throbbed with a dull red glow. Ow! Careful, she cried a single tear rolling down her cheek. Zack wiped the tear from her face and was surprised when it rolled down his finger and lay in the palm of his hand where it sparkled for a moment before disappearing in a tiny burst of light. Oh no! shouted Krista, snapping out of her trance. The fire! It's too hot for the brush turkey's eggs! What brush turkey? asked Zack. But before Krista had a chance to reply, he was bowled head over heels by a powerful bird, which leapt on top of the mound, and with a kick of one of its long legs, scattered the glowing embers in all directions. There are eggs in that mound, cried Krista, pulling Zack out from under a pile of leaves. Quickly, follow me. We've got to get off the ground fast. The brush turkey's going wild. Hang a fang, what's a bat gotta do to get some sleep around here? Shouted Batty, walking by the uproar. It's all right, Batty. Go back to sleep. We'll see you in the morning. Shouted Krista as she helped Zack up the first step of the fungus staircase. After the first stair, it was easy climbing as the fungus conveniently spiraled up the giant trunk. This is incredible, Zack yelled running up the stairs behind Krista. The fungus glowed with an iridescent light, and each stair was individually illuminated. I've never seen anything like this before. This is one monster of a tree. What is it? It's a yellow carabine, but it isn't a monster, said Krista. This is one of the bird's favorite trees. The boa birds, pigeons, Doves, catbirds, and most of the parrots in the forest live off the fruit of this tree. Gently touching its orangey-brown bark, she smiled. All the trees in this forest are my friends. What are the trees like where you live? Not like this, he replied. I live in a city. What's a city? She asked, leading the way higher up the tree. Oh, you know, buildings, traffic, roads, lights, not many trees, a city, he said, stopping to look out over the nighttime forest. How can you
you live without trees? Krista asked, climbing up to the soft fungus platform and sitting down. Never thought much about it, he said, climbing up and sitting beside her. But the trees give life. They help make the air and the rain, she said, folding her wings behind her. Oh, we got all that stuff. Don't you miss talking to the forest? She asks, lying back on her arms. Can't say I've actually talked with a forest before, he replied, stretching out beside her. Looking at her in the moonlight, he thought how extraordinary she was. Her dainty pointed ears and windswept hair framed a face that was both mischievous and totally innocent. And when she was still, her body seemed to be almost transparent. I do all the time, she whispered, catching a moonbeam in the palm of her hand and lightly rolling it into a glittering ball. Ah, what does it say? Zack asked, watching her weave her fairy magic right under his nose. Well, listen, she said, blowing the moonbeam off the tip of her finger and closing her eyes. As the full moon peeped at them through the treetops and glowworms twinkled in the leafy shadows, Zack listened to the night. He was surprised to hear the forest hum to a very definite rhythm. Night crickets led a steady chorus, while trees rustled as the wind strummed their leaves. Frogs croaked in time to the crickets, and an owl hooted softly in the distance. Get down, Funky Forest! I never thought of the forest talking or singing before. It's a whole other world up here, isn't it? He said. Magi Loon says there are lots of different worlds, replied Krista softly. She says some of them we don't ever get to see, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. You're really keen on this Magi character, aren't you? Zack smiled rolling onto his side to get a better look at her. Is she a fairy too? Of course she is. What did you think? Well, she could be a witch, I suppose. They both laughed. Didn't you say she had a spell that would fix me? Do you believe in witches? Krista asked excitedly. No way, he said, resting his head on his arm. I was only kidding. Tell me, what do fairies do all day when they aren't talking to humans or catching moonbeams? She frowned. Do? I don't know what you mean. Well, do you work? Do you have a job? What's a job? She asked, stretching her wings and fluttering them daintily. How do you spend each day? He asked looking at her wings and wondering what it would be like to fly. Have fun, mostly, she said with a laugh. Yeah, that sounds cool. No, it's usually hot, she said, tucking her wings behind her. <laughs> no, you've got it wrong. Cool means hot. Whatever do you mean? Yeah, you know, bodacious, bad, tubular, Awesome use of the language, dude. As in, you are one bodacious babe, he said, holding her hand. Is that good? Totally, he grinned. Now we're communicating. That's tubular, she said, <laughs> bursting into laughter as she said the word. For a long time, they lay side by side in silence, happy and relaxed in each other's company. Lost in their own thoughts, they listened to the forest talk and watched the moon glide slowly through the trees. Finally, exhausted after their long day, 
they drifted off to sleep. They slept so soundly that neither of them stirred when a sinister shadowy hand trailed across the moon, darkening the forest. Neither of them had any idea that everything that this sinister shadow fell upon suddenly shriveled and died. And they were so sound asleep, they didn't hear the earth groan with a deep and heart-wrenching call. The cruel laughter that echoed on the breeze would have chilled their hearts if they heard its deadly message. <laughs>